Welcome to the Blockchain Report. We discuss all things blockchain technology, digital assets, DeFi, NFTs, and much more. Today's video, we're diving into part three of the Skynet Certic quest or campaign. Uh, this is a multi-part uh, campaign that we are doing with the Certic Skynet quests. There, I don't know how many there are, but there's quite a lot. Um, you need to have, you know, it's what up to level ten to complete all of them, I believe. There might be more, no, level 10 looks like it's the highest. So we are tasked with completing all of these quests and getting you the answers you need and teaching you about uh, crypto security. So before we actually get started, thank you so much for joining. Please like, subscribe, comment, share this out to anyone you think would be interested in blockchain technology, all the fun stuff we get to learn and cool rewards we earn along the way. Now, I don't know if Certic will do an airdrop or if they will have a token, but I heard some rumblings that there might be one, so it would be good to complete as many of these uh, quests as possible. So we are here to help you along your journey. Now, if you do need further assistance, we do have a Discord. Link is in the description below. Get in there, connect with me and other people in the community, and we can help answer your questions and get you finished with your tasks um, as easily as we can. You know, we're, we got a lot of great people in the Discord helping out and there's a testnet chat that's really popping. There's all kinds of different, um, there's a galaxy page in there. Uh, you know, it's, it's just a great Discord that's growing. So I'm happy to see it, happy to see it. And thank you to everyone that's in there already. Now, let's dive into this video's Certic Quest. The Skynet. So we're going to continue. We are on level five. So we will continue with these guys. <clears throat> so introduction to user security. So what is user security in crypto? Why user security matters? Yeah, beware of uh, security threats strong passwords and two factor authentication don't use the uh, the the text message verification you want at least two factor authentication on all your accounts safely engage with the decentralized dapps or decentralized applications um and certix leaderboard will show you the best dapps to interact with <clears throat> so why is user security particularly important in the world of crypto so because crypto assets are often held in decentralized wallets with no centralized security to offer to help recover funds. So you're, you send your crypto to the wrong place, it's gone forever. Um, what additional security measure is recommended beyond a strong password? Two-factor authentication. Easy peasy. Okay, so now we will begin this one with the Web3 security. Looks like we need to wait till level 10, so we will complete level five. The best practices for wallet security. Strong passwords, 2FA, software updates, make sure your wallets are regularly updated and back up your wallet and create multiple backups of your encrypted wallet. Store them in offline locations. So avoid public Wi-Fi. Don't use public Wi-Fi. Private key security. Keep your private keys offline whenever possible and do not share private key information with anyone else. Best practices for wallet security. Carefully examine links. Beware of phishing attempts. Verify wallet addresses. And wallet permissions and access control. So grant minimal permissions. Revoke permission. Monitor wallet activity. So what should you regularly do? Monitor wallet activity, update all of the above. <clears throat> what should you always double check before sending funds from your wallet? The recipient's wallet address to ensure it is correct. Yes. And before you send any large amount of crypto to another wallet or wherever, send a small transaction amount of like a dollar or two something small to where you know you want to make sure that 
that address that you're sending it to is actually the address that the money gets to so you don't end up losing your funds all right losses related to private key compromises so mixin network had a hack coin x had a hack poloniex a lot of losses due to private key compromises this is just continued, so. How much was it in 2023? $880 million. And now it's $883 million. Now it's 237 Yeah. 881 so Binance did not get exposed. So identifying malicious activity on websites and dApps. So a common way is through fake apps on like the Google Play Store and other websites. Uh, phishing attacks. You'll see emails from from fake you know, profiles or accounts, even on Google, uh, Google Drive, um, even on Google.com, the search engine. When you try and search for something, that's why I say, anytime you find a legitimate website, keep a crypto bookmark right here, and keep a folder with all your bookmarks. That way, you have all this, all the websites saved in there, so you don't need to worry about searching Google. Because if you search Google, they will put scam websites there. They do it, they've done it, and people have gotten hacked, and it sucks. So keep your links saved in a bookmark. <laughs> DNS hijacking, they can hijack your website, some helpful tools, and due dil diligence and insights. So how can you protect yourself? Um, yeah, be cautious with emails and messages that ask for sensitive information. Always verify links. What might indicate that a website is a sca scam or fake? <clears throat> yeah, the URL has subtle differences from the legitimate site, like extra characters or misspellings. Boom. Okay, let's go back to the quests, see what we got. Okay, we've completed those. What level are we at? We're on level seven, baby. There we go. <clears throat> All right, we'll do we'll do some of these. Oh, we need to do level five on these. Okay. So Certic blog, introduction to formal verification. So formal verification. Is a rigorous mathematical approach that proves the smart contract and software work according to their specs. So why is it important? It can detect and prevent vulnerabilities. So there's a little bit more on their smart contract verifications, specifications in this soul. So it's a specific a specific language used by Certic to outline the desired properties of smart contracts. This is the verification process. <coughs> Sample issues identified. So yes, formal verification, mathematical approach. Defining properties of contracts to be verified. Bada boom, there you go. Okay, hack 3D part one. Oh, no, let's go back. Let's go back. Because I want to do the level fives first. So we're going we're gonna to do these in order. All right. How exit scammers mint tokens undetected? So what's an exit scheme? Where exit scammers... Uh, hide backdoors that allow them to mint additional tokens undetected. 
and then they use them to remove all the liquidity, leaving investors with worthless assets. So Mumi token, I don't know what the Mumi token is. So I created a liquidity pool and locked liquidity to appear legitimate. Let's explore what happened. So get the locked liquidity gave investors a false sense of security. Rug pull execution. Well, liquidity was locked. Scammers innovated and drained the liquidity by massive exchange amount or by exchanging massive amounts of secretly minted tokens, and they stole everything. So all green charts, only buys and no sells can indicate manipulation. Hidden backdoor contracts with hidden code or source or closed source uh, structures are risky. Aggressive promotions. Tokens heavily promoted on social media often aim to mislead. And that can be true in some cases. How to protect yourself. Verify contracts through reliable audits. Avoid overly promoted tokens with vague information and analyze transaction histories for unusual fee mechanisms. So what do exit scammers use to mint additional tokens without triggering transfer event? Using closed source contracts. Oh no. By bypassing the tool. I thought it was the other one. Okay. Well, dang. Even I get them wrong sometimes. So locked liquidity pool tokens create a false sense of security for investors during a rug pull scam. True. True. Okay. Next up. Introduction of diamond agency contract. So what are diamond proxy contracts? Their design pattern introduced through EIP 2535. So it allows smart contracts to have unlimited number of functions by breaking down its feature into smaller contracts called facets. Interesting. So this goes into the architecture, diamond proxies, key components, fallback functions. I won't go too much into this. There's some benefits, best practices, and comparisons and identifying red flags so true so why should the initial uh, initialized function be protected in diamond proxies i don't know that why should the initialize function? Let's look for the initialize function. I'm just guessing at this one. Oh, yes, to prevent unauthorized access. Way to go. Way to go on the guesses. Okay, next up, top compliance risks in crypto. <clears throat> Exposure to illicit activities, sanctions adherence, jurisdiction, specific regulations like being in the U.S. and other countries that are required or that are not able to participate in KYC on exchanges. Uh, there's some Skynet solutions. Uh, compliance risks involve using blockchain transactions for illegal activities like money laundering or terrorism financing. So which compliance risk involves this one? Exposure to illicit activities. So Certix Sky Insights analyzes transaction fees and doesn't help companies comply with global regulations. Let me double check. I just want to make sure before...
Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, let me get some more hearts on this one. Okay, so it does help comply. I thought it only did the first one. <clears throat> All right, how does Sky Insights help companies comply with the uh, global crypto regulation? By analyzing transaction fees? I'm just going to be guessing at this one. By maintaining a repository of global regulation. All right. On to the next one. Hedgy finance event analysis. So an overview of a hedgy finance uh, contract vulnerability. The contract failed to revoke token approvals after the campaign cancellation and the attacker transferred the tokens. So there's the attack flow, copycat exploiters, stolen fund movement, lessons learned, and the exploit was due to a missing line of code that failed to revoke Yes. How much was it stolen for? Two million. Two million. And there we go. On to the next one. Let's refresh this and see where we're at. See where we're chilling at. Thank you all for being so patient and going through my my goofs. Okay, we'll uh, we'll pause there and continue on the next one. Well, we'll go into some project focused ones uh, in the next video. So we'll complete these and this <clears throat> in part four. So I appreciate you all so much, and I'm glad these are helping you out. Um, keep tuning in. I'll keep pumping them out. And if you have any video recommendations, please let me know. I'm always open to suggestions. So I appreciate you all so much. Have a wonderful day. And with that, this is the Blockchain Report. Have a wonderful day. Peace, homies.